Hello, hello again everyone, it's uh, Charles here from MGN again and today I want to just, um, I want to discuss this next gen upgrade debate. As some of you may be aware and have already seen in the mainstream media with the typical Sony's evil, oh they're anti-consumer, oh they have to reverse this plan, typical clickbaity nonsense. Uh, Sony have finally announced their plan for Horizon Forbidden West and um, if you want the PS4 and PS5 version, it looks like there's no upgrade option. You just have to pay an extra £10 for like the digital deluxe and that's it. Now, people are saying this is really bad, this is anti-consumer, this is greedy, you name it, everyone's coming up with an excuse, or is quoting Microsoft with Game Pass and their free upgrade channel, but I see this as really, really short-sighted and there's quite a few sides to this argument, it's much more nuanced than this black and white thing it's being presented as. There's the consumer side, there's the business side, and then there's the actual end product delivered side. Uh, and that, for me, is key. But before I get into all that, I just want to say, for just for the record, the Ghost of Tsushima upgrade, that was £10. And all it done was upped the resolution, upped some particles, added a bit of 3D audio, added some haptics. That was not worth £10. That was that was 100% Sony being full greed. They've done almost zero work, and compared to the back compatibility version, which already had the 60 FPS mode, which is the biggest thing, it it really was not justifiable. But to get back on track a bit here, this pro consumer side: should you have to pay an extra 10 pound, especially when Xbox offer it for free, or we get more, and it's even included in Game Pass? That 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 short sighted. On a surface, sure, Sony looks like the bad guy, which is exactly what Microsoft want. But the reality is just much more nuanced than that. So, as everyone complained that Horizon was cross-gen, how it would hold back the game because it was on PS4. And while I don't agree with that, and there will doubt or doubt there will be limitations because of that, and I think overall, a first-party title like Horizon, open world, being on last-gen is a mistake. We've already seen some like really good effort from Gorilla Games. In that 15 minute showcase they showed us a, a brand new underwater system with physics and so on. That's unique to PlayStation 5, you can only get it on PlayStation 5 and we don't know what other systems they got in place but that underwater system is far above anything we've seen in any open world game ever by absolute light years and it's exclusive to PS5. That took development time, that took engine upgrades and tweaks, that took a lot of work, which is time and thus money. So it's cost them more to develop and they're asking a little bit more for it. That is a completely justifiable business practice. They've got two products, one costs a bit more to make so they charge a little bit more. It's, it's almost that simple. Now I can hear people shouting, oh, don't just give me a free upgrade, MS does it. But here's the thing with that. I'm not, I'm not saying Sony can't absorb the cost, they could. I mean, there is no real reason to, and they've got a legitimate business argument, they're producing two versions of a product, one costs more to make, so they charge you slightly more. However, no, no MS game that is cross-gen has any systems that are unique to its like, next-gen version. It's always just by the numbers, up the resolution, up the frame rate, maybe tweak another couple of things here and there, that's pretty much all it has ever been. And when you look at a lot of their games, not all of them, I mean Horizon and Halo are on their own, or Forza and Halo are on their own engine. They're moving much more to Unreal Engine, Gears of War's on Unreal Engine. And all they do for that is they just go into the engine and they just up the numbers and some effects and stuff. That's all they do. They up the draw distance a little bit. They just up the number on that, they up the number on that and they compile. That's it. They're not putting anywhere near as much time as like Gorilla Games is, for example, with Horizon. They're just not. They're putting much less time and thus money into their free next gen upgrades. And I mean, that aside for a minute. Sony's developing for PS4, PS4 Pro, and PS5 into 2022, and maybe 2023. And they're actually going out of their way and making sure the PS5 version, the next gen version, has significant differences. I mean, Mars Morales is another perfect example. The ray tracing alone, that changes an open world game, especially an open world game like Spider Man. That alone would have took so much time and effort. That would have cost 
significant amount of money to add specifically for the PS5 version. So is it then unreasonable to ask for more? Not really, it's custom more, they put a lot of time and effort into it, so they want to try and cover that cost by charging a little bit more, that, that's normal business practice. And then to add to that further, no one can deny that the Sony production values versus Microsoft at the moment, they're just completely different levels. Sony games cost more to make, they put a lot more money in, now you can argue whether you like the type of game they make, all you want, and that's fair, that's the opinion. Some people like that style, some people don't, but they flat out cost more. All their engines are pretty much bespoke, while Microsoft's more and more leaning on the free Unreal Engine where all the engine upgrades and things are done for them, minimal effort, while Sony's doing bespoke engines, bigger budgets, and spending much more time tweaking the next-gen versions to offer something significantly different from the last-gen, and I mean, Miles Morales, again, is a perfect example that even with the ray tracing out of the equation, the PS4 version is an entirely different beast to the PS5, the rigging, the model work, everything is just so significantly different. But still, that doesn't really even hold a candle to what we're seeing with Horizon. And to go into that a bit more with the cross-gen platform, everyone seems to have forgotten, and the mainstream media certainly isn't mentioning, that from 2022, all first-party Microsoft titles are Xbox Series exclusives. Now, is there a cheap entry point into the console space? Technically, yes, with the Series S, but you have to buy a new console. If you can't afford one or you can't get one, tough. You can't play any new first-party Microsoft games. Now, Sony's approach isn't perfect, but they've got a user base of 116 million users on PS4, and at least 100 million of them are still only on PS4. That's a lot of money on the table. So Sony have decided we don't want to leave our last user base that we've got the ps4 we still want to support them we still want to give them the big budget games they used to but we also want to give the ps5 games so they've done a couple of ps5 exclusives demon souls rift apart and they've decided to do cross-gen versions of some of their other bigger budget titles now you can argue for no end whether it's a good decision to put certain games on ps4 as i've said i think personally horizon being an open world game bad idea but that aside the systems they put in for PS5, like the underwater system, that is unique and took time. They are clearly focusing on making these two versions completely distinct, and they've already shown that on Mars Morales. That takes time, that takes money. Again, reiterate the point. It's a business making a product. That's what video games are, products designed to make money. They're producing two products. One product costs more to make, so they're charging slightly more. It's as simple as that. Meanwhile, Microsoft is just cutting out last gen. And the upgrades they do offer are minimal work compared to what Sony does. What Sony is doing for the most part. Tsushima aside, again, inexcusable. But I want to put something else in perspective here. Microsoft's just a sheep in wolf's clothing. They're pretending to be the good guy, but they're not. They're just using the immense wealth that they have got through multiple questionable means throughout the years and dodgy practices. And they've made the calculation, we're going to absorb all the cost of the Game Pass, we're going to absorb all the cost of these free upgrades for a little bit. Try and push Sony out or try and get some of the user base that they've lost. They've lost like 40% of the users compared to the 360 era with Xbox One. And they made the calculation that once they get that number hit again, they're just going to jack up the price. Every subscription goes up in price. They're just going to jack it all up. And they're buying out massive publishers, taking away franchises that have been on multi-platform for a very long time, taking them away specifically from Sony. While well, Sony's just been buying studios that have only ever made Sony games. It's a big money grab. They have infinite wealth. They made 168 billion in revenue. Now that is revenue, granted, but 168 billion in revenue alone last year. They've been doing that for years. They have got a massive war chest. They can just absorb as much loss as they want to stranglehold themselves into the market, try and get a big massive market share. And then when they have, they're just going to go ham. Psychonauts 2 is actually a perfect example of this. On Fig, 34.99. You get Psychonauts 1, 2, and you're naming credits. The game gets bought out by Microsoft. Native PS5 version dropped. Price up to 54.99 for a niche game, a fantastic game, but a niche game that is a sequel to a game that did not even make a profit when it was released. Back in the day that no one's heard of. Clearly to push Game Pass, a service where you don't own the game and a service where they're clearly going to up the price. They're just simply 
absorbing large losses for that calculation, that end game they can get it all back. That's what they're banking on. And for comparison, Sony made 81 billion in revenue last year, thanks to PlayStation. Less than half of Microsoft's revenue, and Sony as a company had been making losses till very recently, again, thanks to PlayStation. They've got no war chest. Microsoft has a massive war chest. They can just absorb all these costs. And if you think Microsoft uh, aren't this evil, corrupt company, Sheeps and Wolfhaven, just look at some of their recent behaviour. Windows 11. Compatible CPU list. Must have a TPM2 chip. But within the CPU. Even though there's software-based versions, and there's other ways to get that chip. And until yesterday, the, 20, the 3rd of September 2021, there was Core 2 Duos on the Windows 11 beta that were running it perfectly fine that have all now been kicked out. Now sure Microsoft has said later on you can when it's out you can install Windows 11 on these devices but you ain't going to get security updates and other updates while at the same time saying Windows 11 is all about security. So on one hand it's all about security on the other hand you can install it in devices and not get the security updates we don't care. But if you want the security updates you want to stay safe then you have to buy new hardware during a shortage where the prices have gone sky high from the, the actual manufacturers themselves to the retailers. Why has Microsoft done that? Simple, money. There's loads of ways they could allow these machines on in different forms of TPM to chips, even if it's a software based version which isn't as good but still works. Or get an individual chip. They decided not to. Reason for that? Big money deal with AMD and Intel and other tech companies. You have to buy latest tech which is jacked up and hard to get if you want to keep your security. That's just a scummy move. That's the real face of Microsoft. You go out front of you, see all the things they have done. They are not a good company. They are not your friends and they are not pro-consumer. They want you to think that because they want to lull you into that false sense of security. And then when they've got you, they are going to bleed you dry. So to start wrapping up, there's a pro-consumer argument where people are making comparisons to MS while ignoring the fact Nintendo take Wii U games, add a little bit of content at times, and then charge full price again. No backwards compatibility. Just charge a full 60 quid, who cares? It's an old game we've done almost nothing to, but hey, give us 60 quid. While Microsoft are also dropping last gen, so now you have to buy an next gen console if you want their first party titles, which is saving them a lot of time and a lot of money. While Sony's actively trying to make two standalone versions not give up their over 100 million user base, while also providing something unique and distinct from the PS4 version in the PS5 version, which takes time and money. Cost has gone up. That's why they're charging more. They could absorb the cost, but then why should they? They're a company making two products, one product costs a little bit more, so they charge a little bit more. And by doing that, they're not shutting out their entire audience of previous console owners and again what if, even if you can afford an Xbox Series S you have one you have to buy a new console two what if what if you can't get a hold of one or what if you can't afford one then tough you can't play any more MS um, first party titles that's it boom now Sony's method to this might not be perfect but I don't see how you can say it's anti-consumer for them to want to support their old user base, make two products, one that costs slightly more and charge slightly more for it and call that anti-consumer. It's not. This is the narrative Microsoft wanted. They've completely skewed the value of things. As usual, the big mainstream media is happy to go along with it. Microsoft's the big boy. They've got billions upon billions of dollars. You don't want to annoy them. Let's put a positive spin on everything. Let's get some clicks. There's a, there's a lot more to this argument that's being betrayed. It's not a simple black and white one charges and one does not. There is genuine, genuine differences within the approaches and cost to how these companies are doing things. At the end of the day, you have a choice. You can stick with the PS4 version, play that back on Benny on PS5, or you can pay the extra £10 and get a genuine next-gen version that's more than just a resolution and an FPS boost and some number boost. Getting unique systems. And even when it is... Technically numbers, ray tracing is not really numbers to be honest, it's a completely different form of rendering that they implemented in Mars Morales, which would have took significant time and money. Microsoft has not done anything like that with its free upgrades. 
nothing even remotely comparable. What approach you prefer, that, that's entirely up to you, that's subjective. If you prefer Microsoft's approach, more power to you. But both companies are setting out to achieve entirely different things and charging £10 for tangible and significant differences in next-gen versions while still offering a previous-gen version is not greedy, it's not anti-consumer, it's completely justifiable and a normal business process. Sony have decided not to leave the users in the dust. That means that they've got two different versions to develop for, the costs are higher, they're making both versions distinctly different, and they're charging a little bit more, because it costs them more. But if you want to call that anti-consumer, isn't it also not anti-consumer to force people into having to buy one of your new systems, even if there was a cheap entry point, just to play their first party exclusives? Surely that's just as anti-consumer. So that's it, that's where I stand on it ultimately. Sony are making two different products, one costs slightly more, they're charging slightly more. That's normal business practice, that happens on a daily basis. No one ever complains about it then, so why are people complaining now? Clickbaits and shilling. It's as simple as that. Where do you sit on this? Let me know in the comments, but I think I've already laid out clear and reasonable arguments why this, this whole extra charge for the next gen versions from Sony isn't actually anti-consumer at all and it isn't really greedy it's just standard business practice you don't have to agree with it you don't have to like it but it's standard business plain and simple